Three tanks from the now closed Fort Meade Museum are on their way to new homes. Hello and welcome to Meade Week. I'm Brian Spann. More on that story in a moment. Also this week, an infrastructure update from the Garrison Commander, news from the Maryland VA, and the Twilight Tattoo Series returns. These stories and more, but first, Army Community Services announced the Volunteers of the Year for 2021 this week. Every year, Fort Meade volunteers donate thousands of hours of their time, saving the installation hundreds of thousands of dollars. Here are this year's Volunteers of the Year. The Youth Volunteer of the Year is Syra Potts. She was nominated by the Post Thrift Shop. The Volunteer Family of the Year for 2021 is the Great House Family. The family of four donated more than 1,600 hours at the Post Thrift Shop and the Fort Meade Spouses Club. Speaking of the Spouses Club, it's the Volunteer Organization of the Year with more than 2,700 documented volunteer hours. Alexa Greathouse is the Civilian Volunteer of the Year. Alexa volunteered at the Thrift Shop and the Spouses Club, donating more than 1,500 hours. And finally, the Active Duty Volunteer of the Year is Master Sergeant Nicholas Potts. Potts was nominated by the Post Thrift Shop. Congratulations and a big thank you to all of Fort Meade's volunteers. In other news, at the April Installation Town Hall, Garrison Commander Colonel Chris Nyland went into depth on upcoming infrastructure projects, projects that were largely driven by community input. This year, I've earmarked about $1.5 million uh, for infrastructure repair, for our roads, for striping, for signage, uh, et cetera. And I, what I, I wanted to share with you a quick list of some of the things that we're going to be getting after. So the first one, and probably the one that is going to impact the most people, um, and is going to be the most inconvenient, but will be the best outcome on the other end, is Mapes Road. The stretch from Mapes Road from English Road to, to Rose Avenue is going to be completely repaved. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to install six um, new flashing crosswalk lights across Mapes Road. So those are lights that will light up and flash when someone's using the crosswalk to go across. You're going to see striping projects going on base-wide um, on roads and parking lots throughout posts to include uh, the exchange and, uh, and the shop bets. Two traffic lights. There's one on Mapes and MacArthur and there's another on MacArthur, MacArthur and Ruffner. Both of those lights are getting upgraded. They're getting retrofitted with new LED lights that will make those more visible and make both of those intersections safer. Uh, we're going to be redoing the sidewalks uh, near the Class 6 that run from Mapes all the way out to Cooper. Across the entire installation, we're going to be upgrading and replacing directional signage. And then based on some of the ICE comments that uh, you have submitted, we're going to be adding some additional handicap spaces throughout the post. Elsewhere, it was a sad day for many in the Fort Meade community as it bid farewell to the very last displays at the now-closed Fort Meade Museum. Three tanks, a Liberty Mark 8, an FT-17 M1917, and an M3A1 were all located inside the museum. Two exterior walls had to be taken down to get the tanks out of the building. They were then loaded onto flatbed trucks for transport. The FT-17 was the American version of a French design by Renault. It's been called the world's first modern tank. The FT-17's new home is the first cavalry museum at Fort Hood, Texas. The M3A1 was built between 1942 and 1943 and is part of the Stewart family of tanks. It's headed for the U.S. Army Armor and Cavalry Collection at Fort Benning, Georgia. The last tank, the Liberty Mark 8's new home, is also at Fort Benning. The Mark 8 was built in 1920 at Rock Island Arsenal, Illinois. It was assigned to the 17th Tank Battalion. Then Major Dwight D. Eisenhower commanded this unit from 1921 to 1922. We'll post more images and a background story on the Digital Mead page of our website. In other news, the Maryland Department of Veterans Affairs recently released a YouTube video, NDVA 101, that briefs all of the services they provide Maryland veterans. The Department of Veterans Affairs operates five core programs, a service program, Charlotte Hall Veterans Home, a cemetery and memorial program, the Maryland Veterans Trust Fund, and an outreach and advocacy program. The video goes on to detail each of those services. Service I'm posting a link of the video along with this edition of Mead Week if you want to watch the video in its entirety. And finally on this edition of Mead Week, this week the U.S. Army Military District of Washington announced the return of the Twilight Tattoo. The live action military pageants are scheduled for each Wednesday at 7 p.m. starting May 4th and running through July 27th. The Twilight Tattoo is performed at Joint Base Meyer Henderson Hall and it's free and open to the public. And that's Mead Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Mead TV and the Fort Mead Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Mead Week.